So, sensible or selfish? Joining us now, Professor Richard Wilding, who is from Supply Chain Strategy at Cranfield University. Supply Chain Strategy, you know all about what panic buying That's will do. That's right, I'm a professor the... of supply chain strategy <laughs> there, so, yeah, I understand the impact this has. Quite, sort well, of, we'll uh... talk to you about that in just a moment. Journalist Angela Bussoff, who is stocking up on essential items and has 150 cans at home. <laughs> Dr Hilary Jones is here um, to let us know whether we should be stocking up on medical supplies. So, good morning to you all. Professor Wilding. Trouble is, if you see people stockpiling their own personal supply of toilet paper, it isn't irrational to think you might be caught short and therefore perhaps you ought to do the same thing. But, of course, that's probably the definition of panic buying, isn't yeah. it? Well, one of the things that we have to think through is that most companies have good supply chains, they've been planning for these types of disruptions as well. So, for example, if you have a snow day and all of a sudden, you know, people can't actually move things around, we have to plan for things like that. So other events, all organisations actually have really important planning systems in place. So we shouldn't worry about things running out, except when you look at the pictures of all the empty shelves. Yeah. So what we're seeing is, is that everybody's taking the stuff off the shelves. There will be more goods in other places. So if you're thinking about, you know, some foodstuffs, peas, for example, there is one harvest a year. They harvest all those peas. They are stockpiled somewhere in the supply chain and then they're moved out to consumers as they need them mm. and manufacturers are actually moving them. So what can end up happening is, is we just end up with all the stock in the wrong place and then sometimes people who really need certain items can't get hold of them. And that has, that's a problem. So, you know, in my world of supply chains, competition isn't between individual companies, it's between the supply chains they are part of. And it's the same in our community. You know, at the end of the day, if I've got lots and lots of stuff in my house, then other people who may need it in the community can't Angela, actually get it. Angela, that's you. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think this whole argument about it being selfish in terms of stocking up, I think we can all agree. I mean, I have a six-year-old daughter. I have asthma, so I'm one of the kind of vulnerable groups. And I think in terms of sort of being selfish, probably looking after your family is the best kind of selfishness. And also, if we're going to talk about selfishness, there's a lot of discussion at the moment about how this is basically just flu. And people say it's basically just flu. Every year, a few people die from flu. Vulnerable people... People with compromised immunity, older people. And they say that as if it doesn't matter. But when you're one of those groups, you think, when you hear this said over and over again, you think, oh, great, nobody's got my back. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think I'm going to take care of myself. So have you stocked up on Ventolin inhalers? Yeah. So I've got... I mean, I've basically stocked up for, like, a month. So I've bought a month's worth of Blue Roll and I've bought 150 cans because that is kind of what it takes to kind of feed a family of three mm -hmm. for a month. Did and you do it I've online or repeat... did you go and get it from the shop? No, I did it online. But you know what's embarrassing about that is that nobody has bags anymore so they turn up and it's literally like an avalanche of cans can up, can <laughs> it takes about 20 minutes to unload you it's the most order embarrassing 150 thing 150 cans yeah. in one go yeah well, why right. not <laughs> so, okay. and, but be careful because it's a logistical nightmare interesting marion says on facebook um sort of i went to one of the local supermarkets yesterday and heard the staff members talking about keeping hand sanitizers for themselves when it came to it someone else was just talking about going in and she wanted to buy some hand sanitizer and the woman in front of her took about 20 bottles and left none on the shelves yeah. mm -hmm. and that's one of the frustrations i think isn't it richard the people will see i mean you did it online so it's coming straight to your yeah. door so no one's necessarily seeing but you in the shop taking a, a sort of no 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 i get that hand. and also you know but, uh, but i would say that is the shops yeah. area to sort out the shops for sure should not be letting people buy an entire supply of something. Well, do they, but they, so do they start putting security on the toilet aisle? Yeah. Well, but what they're doing in Superdrug and in Boots is that it's behind the counter and you can yeah. ask for two and that's what you get. How many um, inhalers have you stocked up on? I've stocked up on, like, another month's supply, so I've got two mm. of each of the... Dr Hillary, if everybody... Um, you know, I totally sympathise, of course, if you have mm. a, a, you know, a health condition. But also, I do that before I went on mm. holiday as well, right. so it's like none of this is kind of, like, extreme mm. stockpiling. Is actually being sensible? Or can it have a knock-on effect on others? I mean, you know, you, Angela, you say, of course, it's the supermarkets to... Con uh, it's up to the supermarkets to control supply. It's up to the Department of Health, isn't it, sure. to make sure that we have enough supplies sure. for inhalers, for yeah, instance? Yeah, in, in normal Because they're going to be used by coronavirus patients as yes, well. Yes, in normal circumstances, we would say always have a spare inhaler, um, and inhalers are in, not in short supply. Um, the Department of Health have... Um, uh, uh, Place, things in place to make sure that we have enough in our shelves and there's a constant supply coming through. The supply chain doesn't involve a great, huge manpower, mm -hmm. so you've got one 
guy driving a truck from Europe uh, full of inhalers and we'll have those on a, on a shelf somewhere. But inhalers don't have an infinite shelf life, so we can't stockpile them for very long anyway, which is true of many medicines. So if people are thinking, you know, I'm going to be a doomsday um, uh, uh, prepper and, and, and have, you know, for a year all my inhalers, it's not going to work because many of those medicines would go out of date. And it's the same with food as well because, um, you know, if you're thinking about all the food, you've got all your cans, mm -hmm. do make sure you think through and look at the use-by dates on those mm -hmm. and give them to your local food bank yeah, because course, yeah. one of the key things is is that, you know, in my community in rugby, there's a lot of people who do not have the financial resources mm -hmm. to be able to actually um, go out and stockpile and mm -hmm. buy, spend, you know, well, hundreds no, of pounds also, on stuff. And also, we have to think about that part of our no, community. No, I agree, but also, you know, this whole thing about not panicking when you're mm. an average citizen, even if you're in a vulnerable group, you can only achieve that zen-like state of calm if you have confidence that the mm. government will look after you. Mm. I have zero confidence that this government has in hand. How many people go to food banks every day? Those people are vulnerable people and they have food problems mm. on a good day. Professor Wilding, um, we can call it stockpiling, we can call it panic buying, we can be critical of Angela because 150 cans is, you know, obviously going to have an effect on on um, the cans temporarily, <laughs> yes, temporarily the supply of cans temporarily. Yeah. But, for instance, if somebody needs to self-isolate for two weeks, they're not going to be able to go out and buy food. So isn't it, you know, and if 80% of us in a worst case scenario are going to get coronavirus, isn't it actually sensible to make sure that at home we have enough food in the event that perhaps tomorrow we might need to self-isolate for a fortnight? I think what you have to think through is that at this stage you have to take the advice of government, which is relatively sound advice. And I know, you know, the preparations which are actually going on because I'm connected with some of those things across, you know, military, NHS and everything else. And things are in hand. The UK, you know, is in a very resilient position for dealing with this. I think the, the, the worst thing is panic. I mean, this type of event, if we go back a number of years, you remember the m Millennium Bug? Mm. Can you remember? Mm. And actually, the fear of the bug mm. was worse than the bug itself. Mm. In other words, people started panicking at that particular point in time and lots of companies were yes, building up stocks. Yes, but we didn't see the bug happen. happen. Yeah. With this bug, yeah. we are seeing it well, spread. Well, it's happening, but we, at the moment, you know, we just need to make sure that we just take good advice yeah. around... But you say that, but also the government are about to shut down Parliament for five months. Well, they're talking about they're it. They're, not, no, well, they're I mean, talking about it, but it's like... They're saying, saying you know... There's a, no, there's... but, Angela, there's a difference between saying they're about yeah. to or they're talking about it. I know, but they are talking you, about it, so then you're sort of saying don't panic, but they're doing that. If you stockpile, you say for a month, what do you do after that? Because if everyone stockpiles like you do for a month, there will be nothing to go back out to. Uh, when you go to the supermarket well, in a month's time. Well, but Dr Hiro, Angela's point is that it's not that there will be nothing to go back out to. It's that if we are trying to make sensible preparations for a period of time when we're ill or yeah. we're oh. off work or yeah. we're self-isolating because we're afraid we might be I ill, agree. then it is the government's responsibility and the supply chain responsibility to make sure that they can advisors. backfill. Yes, absolutely. And we ha we've heard that there are contingency plans that supermarkets are putting in place and yeah. the supply chain generally. I trust uh, medicines to be able to get into this country in, 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 in um, adequate amounts. Even uh, so though that, India yeah. has put a stop on certain medicines well, we don't being get, exported. Yes, and, 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 but we have the capability of producing our own mm. uh, to, to some extent um, and we will have all the things that are you know, life-saving yeah. available uh, for our public. I, have, mm. I don't have any doubts about that. Professor but I do Wilding, is there we... anything that you would stock up on? Um, <laughs> Even while you're trying to, you know, not to make anybody <laughs> panic about it. Um, well, we, I, I'm sort of, I was thinking about what stockpiles I actually have in my uh, my garage at the moment. I've still got sort of a, a bit of an overpurchase of chocolate and an overpurchase of champagne. So <laughs> I'm Christmas. thinking I've probably got <laughs> it. Yeah, from Christmas. That's a, that's a normal yeah, scenario. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a normal scenario. <laughs> and um, what will you and the family be eating for the next five months? Was it spaghetti hoops? Oh, I mean, it's grim. It's not going to be a fun period of time, I tell you. <laughs> I literally went for the basics because it's hard to find you in an ideal world I'd have a freezer full of food but I actually think in this situation it's better to buy cans because they'll last longer sure. so it's I mean there's corned beef there's <gasps> tin chicken who knew that existed Chuck I mean chicken. I don't want to be too patronizing about it because obviously there are people who have to eat sure. things like that every day yeah, yeah. but this is not the way we usually eat and it seems like it might be if we is went it, into it, isolation. Is it really powdered eggs and carnations? No it's <laughs> not. I think it's worth thinking there's also a really important thing that people you know they'll make a, a decision so for example we've had all this big fuss about uh, face masks. Yes. 
Yes. So what's actually happening? I'm talking to companies who work in for do-it-yourself companies, you know, mm. do-it-yourself outfits. Yeah, why stuff, yes. And what's happening is people are switching from medical masks and going and buying, industrial say, masks. industrial masks. Yes. Mm. Now, the problem with that is, is that for people to do their jobs... They need those they masks. They need those masks because you have to yep. um, look so after the legislation. The trades. yeah, of course. So then all of a sudden you'll find that people who are trying to do their job can't do their job because they can't get the personal protective equipment they need. So uh, I think... I think we that's just such need an to be. We just point. need to yep. think that our Conscious decisions, yeah. our personal decisions, can have sort of consequences which knock Unintended. on across the supply chain yep. because it's networks which are competing here. And said, I've been buying a few extras since late January. Bought the, for the family thought I was bonkers. I've noticed where I do my shopping, tin meatballs have skyrocketed in price. Seventy nine p, not on offer. The over two making, pounds. Are they going to make money out of this to game the virus? I think that some. Well, we're already finding that if you're trying to source certain items from China for example, there is a bit of a bidding situation mm. going on to try and get capacity. Mm. So but prices I mean, are going up but slightly that's another, and that'll um, take a while to yeah. filter through to the consumer. But that would be another terrible unintended consequence yes. if food becomes more expensive that's right. for people who already struggle. Yeah. Yeah. But then, again, surely food. that's a governmental matter for them to step in and ensure that doesn't happen. Well, that's <laughs> uh, Dr Hillary, thanks very much indeed. Angela, thank you. And Professor Wilden, thanks very much thank indeed. Thank you very much indeed.